Good morning, everyone. I'm Xiang Li uh, from Tsinghua University. So in this talk, the marginal line attacking the boundary of DS caching protection, uh, we introduce a new powerful DS cache pointing attack named the marginal DS. Uh, so before the details, uh, I'll show you our attack impact. So our marginal DS could point a whole TLD such as .com or .net at, at the time. Thus, all domains under that TLD will be uh, hijacked. And in the following, I'll, I'll introduce how marginal DS works. So to start with, uh, DS plays an important role in today's internet ecosystem. And it translates uh, domain names to IP addresses and uh, provides a solid basis for multiple applications and services. And according to various signs uh, studies, uh, there are more than 350 domain names have been registered. So here, uh, here is how uh, domain resolution works. Oops, sorry about that. So uh, before the resolution, a domain is uh, registered. Let's say it is uh, example.com. So uh, the resolution starts by the DS client to send a query to the configured uh, uh, resolver. Uh, it can be a forwarder. Then the forwarder just uh, uh, transmits the query to its upstream server. Then the recursive resolver will do the iterative process with different uh, authoritative servers until it gets a valid response from the uh, real name server. Then that response will be cached by all resolver rules. And about the packets, uh, there are two important fields, uh, including source pod and TXID to match the query and the response. And in totally, uh, the source port and the TXID are all 6-bit uh, space, so there are totally six, uh, 32 bits to uh, uh, guarantee a query can be matched with the response. So since DS is the core store of the internet, embodying multiple uh, uh, services and applications, attackers have long been trying to manipulate its response for hijacking where uh, DS can poisoning. So what is DNS cat poisoning? Uh, since DNS is primary over UDP, attackers can uh, want to inject forged answers into the resolver's cache. Uh, so to inject uh, the forged answers, there are mainly two ways. So for unpass attackers, they can observe the network link and return forged answers directly. And for off-pass attackers, uh, they have to guess the identification fields, including the source port and the TXID. And the DS cat poisoning is like a kind of mouse game. Since it was disclosed, uh, there are multiple attack, attack techniques that have been continuously developed. So here I'll, uh, I'll show a famous on attack named uh, cache purif attack. So Cache Purif wants to inject some forged responses from his own uh, authoritative server. So uh, Cache Purif just uh, uh, query a domain for his own, uh, own alternate .NET towards the SP resolver. Then the resolver will do the resolution towards his own name server. Then Cache Purif just return the answers and including the fake uh, internet uh, uh, NS records. So after the resolver uh, received all the responses, they, uh, it just uh, trusts all the records in the response and uh, uh, without uh, any data verification. So all future queries and for internet .net will be hijacked. So the root cause is that there is uh, no uh, data verification in uh, in that time. So to mitigate the cache purif attack, uh, uh, the security research, uh, community, community proposed uh, the bandwidth checking. So 
uh, the bad weak check in the bot uh, uh, on the record must be from the same domain as the request. So here, here is an example. So when we query example.com, so the bad week is the example.com. So in the answer section, the authoritative section, the example.com is in bad week, where my bank.com is also bad week and it should be removed. So after cache purifier attack, uh, bad week checking is well implemented in the uh, resolver implementations. And the unpassed DNS catch poisoning seems impossible. So 26 years later, we wonder whether bandwidth checking is well impl uh, implemented as desired. So, so uh, unluckily, the answer is not. We find uh, our marginal DNS breaks this guarantee with a more uh, powerful catch poisoning vulnerability. So marginal DS is uh, proposed by our live, and it uh, can be launched from uh, either on-path or off-path, and can poison a whole TLD. And uh, uh, we exploit some vulnerability of the battery checking itself to bypass it, and just working like a, uh, breaking the marginal line, we named it as marginal DS. So, uh, since our attack target is a CDN resolver, I will show you how, how, is, uh, how is CDN. Uh, CDN is a conditional DN resolver with both uh, for, uh, recursive and forwarding query modes. And uh, uh, between the forwarder and the recursive, they, share a, they have a shared cache. And there are two query zones to uh, identify the different uh, resolution, called ZF and ZR. And the CDS is widely used uh, to uh, split the networks for enterprises or to reduce, uh, forward some video style um, domains to reduce the traffic, uh, traffic cost. So as shown on the right, the CDS just uh, forward global queries to Google, while do the local recursive queries for local domains. So here is our a uh, threat model. So be, uh, before the attack, we assume uh, CDNs have been identified and we obtained their query zone. And our key idea is to attack in the forwarding mode. So the uh, attacker just sends a query for his, own dom uh, for his or her own domain. And depending on the query zone, the CDNs will forward the query to either the attacker server or to an um, upstream server. Then the attacker uh, needs to for, uh, inject the forged responses into the global cache by exploiting the bad weak vulnerabilities. So after that, in the end, all the future queries for, uh, for the fake uh, uh, TRD will be hijacked. So uh, here is the uh, vulnerability details in the forwarding mode because it will accept all the uh, records in the response. And we find the bandwidth checking for the recursive mode is well implemented, but the forwarding mode is not. So we propose to leverage the shared global DNS cache to exploit uh, this vulnerability to attack the well-protected recursive. So to find the vulnerability, we conduct an uh, in-depth analysis of uh, eight DNS software and extract uh, their bandwidth checking implementations. And we also summarize uh, the bandwidth checking logic uh, and uh, find uh, the root cause in the uh, initial query function. And we find uh, uh, four DNS software uh, vulnerable, including Bindi and the Microsoft DNS. And to demonstrate the, the attack impact, we conduct both on-path attack and off-path attack with new uh, vulnerabilities to get the source port and the TXID. Sorry. Uh, and uh, our result, uh, for the on-path attack, our result is deterministic. 
because we can inject the forged answer directly. Well, for the off-path attack, attacks on Microsoft and Bind9 cost uh, an average of only 800 seconds. And uh, uh, here is a, a screenshot of the attacker log. Besides, we conduct uh, measurements with our proposed new methodology to find uh, uh, vulnerable resolvers. And uh, by uh, filtering out uh, some not applicable one, we find uh, uh, more than uh, 54 key vulnerable CDN resolvers. And we also report the vulnerabilities and uh, suggest the mitigations to all vendors. And uh, uh, they all uh, confirmed and uh, fixed this issue. And we all get, uh, we got a uh, four CVE numbers. So at the conclusion, we propose a, a new threat model on CDS and uh, find uh, a new attack surface on the, uh, in the mixed rows and the shared cache. And we also uh, proposed a new methodology that the attack to find vulnerable CDNs. And we also call for revisit of old DNS mechanisms to enhance the DNS security. Yeah, this is my share today. Thank you all for your attention. Thank you.